Can you find a house for less than $250,000 in LA? The Los Angeles real estate market is completely insane. What about the market in Michigan? I would say off the hinges. And how much has this Texas dream house appreciated in three years? And that value is actually going up as we speak. It's all coming up on National Open House. Welcome to National Open House, your ultimate guide to homes and home prices across America. We're about to zero in on Ann Arbor, Michigan, Austin, Texas, and Los Angeles, California. You're going to see how much house you can buy at four different price levels, from entry level all the way up to a million dollars. That's a lot of ground and cash to cover. So let's see what $250,000 buys you. Our first destination finds us 30 miles west of Detroit in Ann Arbor, where one out of every four residents is a student at the University of Michigan. The annual transfusion of new blood keeps the city's median age almost 10 years below the national average. College towns often attract home buyers with plenty of entertainment options, vibrant shopping districts, and at least one really big full-time employer. The University of Michigan employs about 30,000 people here in the Ann Arbor area, which helps to keep our economy strong and in turn supports the real estate market. That means housing prices in Ann Arbor run a bit above the national average. For $250,000 in Ann Arbor, if you're closer to the university, you're going to get a colonial style home, probably with a full basement, three bedrooms, maybe two baths. As you get away from the university, you get a little bit more. Hillary and I met back in November of 2002. We were tailgating before a Michigan, Michigan State football game. About a month later, we went on our first date, and the rest is history. Recent graduates Drew and Hillary Chorney wanted to stay in Ann Arbor. But in order to buy in at $250,000, they wound up just outside of town, 15 minutes from campus. Two years later, their home sweet home has appreciated $25,000. Sweet. The house is a two-story colonial, 2,100 square feet. Total number of rooms is 11. It has four bedrooms, two and a half baths. With a little help from their families, the couple was able to put 20% down, leaving them with a mortgage of $200,000. That may sound like a big chunk of change, but buying a home may have actually saved them money. Our monthly mortgage payment right now, we have an interest-only mortgage. Uh, we pay $625 a month. Given the price of apartments around here, we could actually be paying less for the mortgage versus rent. Not bad, unless you want a little less rain and snow and a little more action. If that's the case, you can head south and west to our next city. LA really is the party city. This is the place everybody wants to get to. This is where they want to follow the dream. LA is one of the most expensive housing markets in the country, and graduating from renting to owning can be tough. What can you get for $250,000 in Los Angeles? The long and the short of it is not very much. I knew that it was going to be very hard to find something that's a two bedroom at that price range. So I just decided to look everywhere, everywhere possible. Not necessarily the most convenient neighborhood. So I ended up in Canoga Park, which is a definite up and coming neighborhood. Freelance writer Dejda Mounts got her start in the LA area by buying a condo in a community about 45 minutes from Hollywood. My condo is 840 square foot, roughly. It's two bedroom full bath and right now just looking at other homes that have gone in the market and been purchased I know that the place is appreciated at least forty thousand dollars the Los Angeles real estate market is completely insane <laughs> but if you're looking for a bit more house for the money maybe you should head to a state where everything seems to be bigger go horns Austin is not your typical Texas town. It, it has its own personality, it has its own style, if you will, and, and we're proud of it. You know, the, Austin's a definitely a young town with seven major colleges locally, population of 1.5 million, and one third of that being the age group of 25 to 44. It's a great place for young professionals. And that leads right into the housing market. The median price for a home in Austin is right around $170,000. The lifestyle, the cost of living is very cheap compared to the rest of the United States. Welcome to Austin! 
The Carter family found their own piece of paradise about 10 minutes north of Austin in the suburb of Round Rock. Our home is approximately 3,000 square feet. It has four bedrooms, two and a half baths, and the lot is about a fourth of an acre. The Carters paid just $220,000 when they bought the house three years ago. They wanted a home that could keep up with their growing family and give Kim Carter a blank canvas to express herself. One of the things I really love about my home is the palette it gives my wife. So the colors you see and everything like that, it's her, it's her, her vision. Austin is naturally beautiful. And that's something that matters a lot to me. And the relationships that we've developed here has really contributed to a great life for us. And that's what you get for around $250,000. Coming up, where do you pay half a million dollars for less than 800 square feet? It's not a cheap place to live. But first, what role does commuting play when Americans buy a home? 63% of Americans said they would prefer to live in a smaller home with a much shorter commute versus 37% said they wouldn't mind a longer commute as long as they could have a larger home. Stay tuned. The median home price in the U.S. is about $208,000, so you'd think a home worth $500,000 would have it all. But it all depends on where you're buying. You can settle into this two-story log cabin just outside of Breckenridge, Colorado, or move to a more traditional house in downtown Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And if you can handle the heat, you can get this expansive four-bedroom in the desert city of Phoenix. No matter how much money you have to spend on a house, you're going to want to buy in a place where you fit in. And if you're a free thinker, Ann Arbor could be the spot for you. Here in Ann Arbor, the vibe is that it is a place where everybody can just be themselves and everybody's welcome. Speaking your mind is a very Ann Arbor thing to do. And that's exactly what Nora Bashore did when she transformed this rustic home in the desirable neighborhood of Ann Arbor Hills. I walked in and I just knew I was going to buy it. I hated the way it looked, but I knew I would buy it. So I completely gutted and remodeled it, everything from the flooring to the walls to the fixtures to the cabinets. Um, I knocked out a few walls and brought it up to date. Nora bought the house in 2000 for $345,000. Six years later, rising property values and Nora's improvements have kicked the value of this place up to around $500,000. That's an appreciation of $155,000, but maintaining this investment takes a lot of dough. I keep my heat really low in the winter. I'm always freezing, and my heating bill's about $300 a month. Still, like many Ann Arborites, Nora isn't going to leave anytime soon. I think people tend to stay in Ann Arbor because it's got strong family values, and it's a safe place to live. But there's a lot of cultural opportunities, so you get that big city feel with the small town vibe at the same time. When it comes to free expression, it's hard to top the independent spirit of Austin. There's something for everybody. Austin's about keeping it original. Everybody's got their own style. Everybody's unique. And every neighborhood is unique. Take Hyde Park, a historic neighborhood that's seen a lot of growth in recent years. Homes in this area that would have sold for maybe 250000 five years ago would sell for probably double that. And the Gibbs family hopes that trend will continue. The main house was built in 1938, two bedrooms, two baths, 1,700 square feet. And then it contrasts with this back garage apartment that was all green built two years ago. That's about 600 square feet, and it's one bed, one bath with a full kitchen. One more squirrel. Well, we bought our home in 2004 for around 430,000, and now I feel like it's up around 500,000. What do you think she's doing? Playing an egg. Rodney and Nancy moved from Los Angeles because they thought Austin would be a more wholesome place to raise Clara. What we love about Austin is that there's all this fun stuff to do like you have in a big city, yet you know, there's things like this. It's a big city and a small town all in one. <laughs> Next up, LA, yet another magnet for free spirits. 
you know, the free thinking vibe of Los Angeles, you can definitely see it in the houses. There are a lot of really unusual houses and strange streets and, and little pockets that really appeals to that kind of person that wants that vibe. But in LA, you've got to pay for it big time. 500,000 is the admission price into the Los Angeles real estate market. To get anything half decent, that's pretty much what you have to spend, half a million dollars. Four years ago, artist Phyllis Bobula found another way in when she took a chance on a vintage LA area called Atwater Village. It's a nice neighborhood because it was built in the 20s, you know, so it's kind of a cute, old-fashioned, quiet little neighborhood. Phyllis bought the Spanish cottage as a fixer-upper in 2002 for $260,000. After a major remodel and four years in one of the country's hottest real estate markets, her home has now doubled in value to just over half a million dollars. My little casita is less than 800 square feet. It's actually about 747, which is teeny weeny. <laughs> There's two bedrooms, one bath. It's the perfect size. I mean, everything is virtually within reach. I like small house, big backyard, and I got that. Another plus is the studio out back, where Phyllis creates one-of-a-kind sweaters that help her pay the bills. My mortgage monthly payment is $1,058, so it's not a cheap place to live. But for Phyllis, having her own little piece of LA is priceless. It's a good feeling. I have a sense of security from that. And that's what you get for about $500,000. Coming up, will $750,000 buy your dream home? $750,000 in Austin will get you a mansion. What you can get and where. Stay tuned. $750,000 is a hefty price tag for a house. But just what exactly will that much money get you? In sunny Boca Raton, Florida, you can lay back in this Mediterranean oasis. But for the same money, you can find a much larger farmhouse on two and a half acres in Saline, Michigan. Or you can get a half acre on a lake with this rustic contemporary in Portland, Oregon. If you're going to spend $750,000 on a home, you want to protect that investment by buying in a city with a strong economy. Austin is home to such a vibrant high-tech industry, the area has been nicknamed the Silicon Hills. Its future job growth has been projected to be two and a half times greater than the national average. $750,000 in Austin will get you a mansion. If you want to build out on some land and still have a 3,000 square foot home, you could definitely do it. Home construction has become such a growth industry, it inspired builder Jason Crabtree to construct this Texas Super Tuscan. Our home is 3,900 square feet. It's got four bedrooms, dining room, kitchen, walkout, basement. I love that it's open, that you walk in the front door and you can pretty much see every room in the house. High-end materials fill every room. I actually built the house for around 500000 but it's worth right now at seven fifty, and that value is actually going up as we speak. Everyone wants to come live in Austin. Back up north in Ann Arbor, the economic prospects are also rosy. While much of Michigan's economy rises and falls with the auto industry, Ann Arbor has a wider economic base. We have the strength of the pharmaceutical companies here, as well as the technological growth of the university. So I believe Ann Arbor is ready to go. The opportunities in the area allowed the Gillett family to build their dream home in a wooded community just outside of town called Dexter. Our house is a basically a modified mission style. It sits on an acre and a half. It's about uh, 3,460 square feet. There's three or four bedrooms, depending on how you configure it. It has three and a half baths, a lot of windows. We built the home in 2003. We did it ourselves for about 500,000, and today it's worth about 750,000. Because they built it themselves, the home is a perfect fit. At four foot ten, main design consideration was Liz's height. There's no overhead cabinets except for the glasses and over the stove. So all the cabinets are low and all the dishes are down so that it's easier for her to reach everything. It was a long project, about two years to design it. It's a great home. It's just wonderful. 
Los Angeles has one of the most diverse economies in the world, including its most famous industry, entertainment. So Los Angeles, of course, is known for entertainment, but that includes things like, you know, uh, video games, music, media, graphic design. You know, a lot of those can be done from the home, and certainly a lot of people are looking to their home now as a workspace. Among those who answered Hollywood's siren call are sound designers Yuen and Rebecca Liu. They found their home in the West LA neighborhood of Culver City. Our house was built in 1951. It's 954 square feet, at two bedrooms, one bathroom, and its current value is roughly around 750. It's kind of compact, it's easy to clean. We've done a lot of work to it, try to make it look kind of up to our standards. 950 square feet may sound a little cramped for $750,000, but the selling point here was the guest house out back. As soon as I saw this house come on the market, it was in the evening, I forced you in to get in the car and we jumped over here and interrogated the neighbors and we saw there was a separate studio and we said, that's our house. And that's the score on what you get for $750,000. Coming up, how much house will $1 million buy? A house that people actually would say, my God, that looks like it's from the Beverly Hillbillies. It's so huge. <laughs> but first, what is the most popular architectural style in the US? Of all the architectural styles out there, Victorian, Cape Cod, Tudor, 39% of Americans actually said that a ranch style home was their favorite. Stay tuned. A million dollar home used to mean a mansion, but what you get for that much money today may surprise you. In Dayton, Ohio, one million dollars will buy this three bedroom and three and a half bath home on three quarters of an acre. In the north woods of Minnesota, you can get five bedrooms on a lake. While out west in Spokane, one million dollars will buy this 10,000 square foot country estate. In LA, million dollar homes were once beyond the reach of all but movie stars and media moguls. But today, more and more homes throughout the city are crossing over to the seven figure range. A million dollars in LA, it's not really what it will buy you, it's what it won't buy you. A million bucks will not get you what you expect. There will not be a gate, it will not be a mansion. It's just shocking for people to see what they get here. 15 years ago, Randy and Dina Stein bought this comfortable home in a West LA neighborhood for $310,000. Then, the housing market took off. Around 2000, prices really started going up. And the last five years has been a, an amazing ride um, and has, has really increased our equity. The Steins used that equity to remodel several rooms, including the kitchen. I wanted stainless steel countertops with a welded-in sink because I wanted to reduce the number of grooves and places food could get stuck. And I wanted a commercial type of stove, oven. We wanted a built-in refrigerator. Our house is a lovely house, but it's not anything ostentatious or anything that special. And yet, it's bumping up to a million dollars. What's remarkable in California is a million dollar home has now become relatively commonplace, and up to a fifth of all home listings, I think in Los Angeles right now, are over a million bucks. Heading east to Michigan, a million dollars still gets you a pretty nice house. 